Hello everybody, Bart over here. Today we are at the Beechcraft Heritage Museum in Tullahoma, Tennessee. We're in the second or the newest hangar that's uh, specifically the newer Beechcraft, the, the metal aircraft uh, airplanes. Uh, the first hangar over there is the, got a Steger Wings and the original aircraft. This is really interesting. This is a cutaway Bonanza I wanted to spend a few minutes talking about. Apparently it was, um, it was uh, owned by Beechcraft to use as a model to demonstrate um, the, how the aircraft function in the various uh, litigations when people were unfortunately killing themselves in the VTL Bonanza so Beach had to litigate and explain consequently how this airplane functions so everything here is uh, well cut in half so you can kind of see the engine compartment as well as the aircraft if you ever wanted to see how big, how massive the crank shaft is, this is your chance. It's really pretty beefy in relationship to the engine. I'm not exactly sure. Um, I'm not exactly sure what variant of an, of an engine it is. I am guesstimating that's an IO 520 perhaps, but let's see, it should say here. Yes, it is a IO 520 BB. So our, this, this engine was in the Bonanzas until 1984 when the IO 550 came on board. This is the airplane I have actually in my 836. So you can see here the muffler, uh, this is the right hand side muffler that's got the uh, studs for the cabin heat. The one that is on the left side, on the pilot side, doesn't have that. Even cut away off the starter so you can see the, arm, the uh, uh, armature or the windings. The magneto is cut out too, I just have to get to it. Uh, alternator is cut out. You can you can see the stator windings just partially, and of course, as you know, the very well know this is a direct couple alternator. So cannot I don't think I can show you the elastomeric coupling and all that. They got the gear meshing. Um, it's probably could see it there if I had a mirror. One thing here you can see very well because the baffling is gone. You can see that crossover or the balance tube here on the intake system, and. Um, <clears throat> that should be inspected as I, I went to a service clinic just to observe and one airplane had a crack in here and the airplane was running real hot. The, engine, the owner said that the aircraft was running re really hot and um, lean basically and possibly it was getting additional false air through that cracked balance too because you can see how close this is to everything. And apparently it was cracked maybe during the installation of the engine. So I don't think it was cracked through vibration or anything, but installation error. And nobody ever noticed until the, the experts at the service clinic took a look at it. Also nice cutaway of the connecting rod and the piston and rings. You can see here the barrel of the cylinder, the valves, the the valve guides right here. That's the most critical, I guess, critical piece of this whole thing. Very little, or if any lubrication here and extremely high temperature. And that's why it is so important, I think, to run reasonably lean with these engines so these things do not de develop deposits here because there's really no way to clean them and uh, they're exposed to extreme heats. And I could, as I mentioned, this muffler here doesn't have the, the studs um, because it's not a heater muffler. So it's a, it's a, it's a standard one. Okay, and then they've got the, gill, uh, the, the kidneys. So you can actually peer into the, the avionics bay. Kind of can kind of see how everything looks from the back. Of course, you can take yours off and peer in there, but. And then also down here, this is also removed. So you can see the rudder pedals and how they function. Actually, they have a plexiglass, so you can actually, we'll get in there and we'll see 
while I'm here. Very common area. Almost every single airplane I've seen on the service clinics had this issue of these brackets being positioned incorrectly. And in fact, I think these are in positioned incorrectly on this airplane as well. These should be on the outside, I believe, so that this thing can be tightened up more. Uh, otherwise, this, this thing can, can be loose. So this clamp should be really be clamping it. And if you put these on the inside, this thing can get, get loose. I'm surprised on the beach aircraft that would be done incorrectly. I hope I'm explaining it right. <laughs> See how the, how, how the other side looks. Yeah, the other side is the same way. I think both sides are uh, assembled incorrectly on this airplane. You can see the second, the, the passenger side, co-pilot side. There's a little fan in here. I never knew that there is a little fan to cool the avionics in there. I don't think mine has that. Well, we'll see. Okay. Let's look inside. This is really nice. The windows are removed. I'm wondering what uh, year model this is. Uh, this must be a late one because it's fully zinc chromated inside. The early ones were not zinc chromated. So I'm guessing this is a late 70s, early early variant. Now, of the um, V35B. We'll, we'll, we'll take a look at the serial number here in a second if it has one. I don't know if it has, has a data plate. But here what you can see is how your control cables ran under the floor and what's really there. Bunch of peanuts, shells left over. So maybe somebody was sitting there eating peanuts. And what I do like about this airplane is that it doesn't have that awful, awful black <coughs> sound deadening material that turns into this goo. Probably because they built it for a demonstrator, so they didn't spray this. Mine's got this goo all over the place, and it's just the nastiest thing imaginable. I don't think it does any sound deadening, but it creates one hell of a mess, and it makes a sticky surface to, for everything to attach. <clears throat> this is... Uh, how it looks behind the, the, the bulkhead here where you would have normally um, compartment wall here. These uh, pulleys, somebody mentioned that it's nice to rotate them 180 degrees at annual. So then the cables, when they wear, they wear at different areas of these pulleys as opposed to the same, uh, as opposed to the same area of the pulley. So I think that's a good, good idea. You could certainly do it on these um, you could probably get them done on some of the other ones to the inspection panels. Just rotate them by hand. You know, like, do it on this one. Just index them differently. And then the cable is running on a unused area of the pulley and then you get a uniform wear. Interesting to see the ventilation system. So you've got basically a cold air intake in the back there, running through that scat hose over here to the distribution panels up on top. And it's nice, it's kind of molded polyethylene or something like that. They do have a little bit of that black goo I was referring to. You see it up, up there? <clears throat> but you can appreciate the, the nice quality of, of assembly. I mean, I, you can see that there's those formers and everything. It, everything looks nice quality construction, I think. Let's go, let's go up here, see if I can. Oh, that's cool. So you have ever wondered how does, well, yeah, I'm sure you've taken the floorboards out, but you can kind of see the linkages for the rudder pedals that are in blue. This is an air, con air conditioning model, so you can see the AC stuff. Uh, I think this must be late 70s because it still has got that, um, who is the manufacturer of these? 
of these instruments. R.C. Allen, I think they moved to a King st stuff a little later and it's got Collins radios. So I'm guessing this is late 70s. <clears throat> yeah. I think there's much more to see maybe from the other side I'll show you. Of course, we'll take a look at the wing because that's very, very interesting. And then key is not to fold down. Data place plate on these airplanes would be by the wing and I don't see it. And of course, for the VTIL owners, you probably are going to be mesmerized by this invention. I'm wondering if these are magnesium. They're, these are zinc chromated, as you can see, and these are just bare aluminum. <clears throat> so maybe they, one of the mechanisms here, or one of the purposes of this would be for Beach to explain how does the V-tail work and why. Although perhaps a little complicated, it can be probably explained and it flies just like any other airplane. I'm guessing, maybe looking at this color coordination, since we looked at the, the rudder pedals and the blue colored pulleys and the blue colored lines, I'm just guesstimating the blue means rudder controls. So there'll be rudder inputs would be through the blue colored rods and, and pulleys and lines. And red, I would think, would be the elevator inputs. I think they have it connected here. So like, for instance, you see this is the red um, cable here and red cable here. But you have the blue rods connecting over here, you see. Wing, wing structure. It's really interesting how the wing is assembled. I'm sure you all know that this is, the wings is connected into join with in two sections using a basically a piano wire and piano hinge. And that's that area over there where the color changes from white to the zinc chromate. And you basically thread the piano wire all the way across the wing. And that's how you join the front section with, the, with that section. The idea is that if you had a damage to the leading edge, then you can replace that section without rebuilding the whole wing. It's, it's a nice idea. But here we can actually see the uplock mechanisms very well. So here's what it is, uplock spring, the whole gear, gear trunnions and all that mechanism. Okay. And you've got the green, of course, is the aileron control. They color coded everything depending on how it works. Fuel tank, of course, is in that forward section here. So <clears throat> it would end right about here and it would go. This is the 80 gallon fuel tank, so or 40 gallon fuel tank it would go all the way here. One thing I do not see here is the uplock cable. I don't know where it is. And yeah, it's gone. All right, and then here's an interesting piece. Maybe I should have showed it before. You see this cable here? That's your flap cable. Actually, it's kind of a flexible cable that runs to your flap motor and runs the flap. <coughs> Too bad that I cannot see the, the Apla cable because I would like to see that. Yeah, that's the, uh, that's the flap actuator here and the cable. Contrast the uh, all aluminum Bonanza with a wood construction aircraft. And you just see the in in intricacy 
and you can just imagine the number of man hours it took to build something like that compared as compared to uh, the metal airplane I mean every little joint you can see glued nailed filed fitted little blocks of wood for support structure and everything I mean it's And complex and complex shapes like this, I can I can even imagine. You had to bend this wood probably by wetting it or exposing it to some humidity. That's why it took so long, and these things cost so much. And here I wanted to show you. This is also pretty neat. These are the uh, Bonanza Wintel models. So, uh, as you probably very well know, Bonanza is one of the very, very first airplanes that was completely fuel uh, tested in the wind tunnels, and those are the models that they use. I think, man, uh, what's, what scale this is? One fifth? Something like that. Those were the original uh, wind tunnel models. Yeah, do you, do you know by chance what size scale is? One fifth, one sixth? Does it not say on here? It doesn't. Okay. I wish I could help you. I do not know. Yeah. Now, I know they did, they've done quite a bit of wind, wind tunnel testing, especially when they were looking at the V-tail design. Isn't that amazing in, for back in that era? In comparison to the regular tail, because they really were worried that this is this is this really going to give them some right. aerodynamic right. improvements. And did you notice that that's number nine up there? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's got a bench seat in front? Oh, it does have a bench seat? I, I noticed it had that st uh, fabric cover ailerons. Right, uh, first uh, 81, I believe. Uh, 81? 40, 40. 40. First 40. And they were all uh, sequential uh, bureau numbers on the side of the aircraft. Cool. You know why I like talking to people here? I learn stuff and I'm one of the people <laughs> that give uh, tours. <laughs> but it's always talking to people who are knowledgeable. Well,. I'm not one of those people, but I just remember reading this just earlier today, so it was fresh in my mind. It was only 40 airplanes. Yeah, it, it is, um, you can only imagine the, <clears throat> the difficulty, I mean, not difficulty, but just the amount of sheer man hours you had to put in to put one of these things together. I mean, everything had to be fitted. And of course, there were jigs for these things, but still, you'd be, deal, you'd be working with wood. And, uh, you know, the airplane's got obviously complex shapes. So, <clears throat> I know that when the Model A was introduced, it, the very first ones, the price quickly increased, but the very first ones started at around eight or $9,000 um, back in 47. At the same time, they're still making the uh, stagger wings and those costed at that time, 23, I believe, thousand dollars. 